Okay, we're going to be quiet at church now. With a minion. Yeah. In kitchen. So we get to be the instruments with our voices today. And Kathy's going to help as she came on the, on the piano. So we will praise God with our hearts. <laughs> Thank you.
coming.
most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing our opening hymn. You want six verses or four? Uh, I, I think we chose. We have all six now, but if you want four, you want four. Let's see how we're doing. <laughs> <laughs>
first reading this morning is from Daniel, chapter 7, starting with the ninth verse, and your resources thereafter. As I watched, thrones were set in place, and an ancient one took his throne. His clothing was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was fiery flames, and its wheels were burning fire. A stream of fire issued and flowed from his presence. A thousand thousand served him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood attending him. The court sat in judgment, and the books were open. As I watched in the night visions, I saw one like a human being coming from the clouds of heaven. And he came to the Ancient One and was presented before him. To him was given dominion and glory and kingship that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not pass away, and his kingship is one that shall never be destroyed. If you would please read responsibly with me from Psalm 93. The Lord is king, robed in majesty. The Lord is robed in majesty and armed with strength. The Lord has made the world so sure that it cannot be moved. Ever since the world began, your throne has been established. You are from everlasting. The waters have lifted up, O oh Lord, the waters have lifted up their voice. The waters have lifted up their pounding waves. Mightier than the sound of many waters, mightier than the breakers of the sea, mightier is the Lord who dwells on high. Your testimonies are very sure, and holiness benefits your household, Lord, forever and forevermore. Our second lesson comes from Revelation, chapter 1, starting with the fourth verse. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of earth. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a, a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming from the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account, all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was <clears throat> and who is to come. The Almighty. So is our good. you over to me. What have you done? 
Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. You may be seated and kids, come on up. we got to pray for Kathy this morning. She plays multiple roles. I don't know where I'm at right now. <laughs> Oh my goodness gracious, look at everybody coming, hello. Okay, let's see, we are on our last week of our four week series that we've been working on for a long time, huh? And, and we're talking about, what are we talking about? I don't even remember now. What are we talking about? What's that mean? That, the big heart is the heart of God, right? And, and the little hearts are the ways that we can show our love for God. And the little hands up here are the ways that we can show our love for everyone else, right? Okay. So, let's see. So, there was a scribe, a teacher. And he asked Jesus, what is the greatest commandment of all? And Jesus said, Love the Lord your God with all your heart. With all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Then he said, The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no greater, greater than these. Yeah. That, I mean, you guys have that memorized yet? Those of you who have been here all four weeks, do you have that memorized yet? Pretty close, huh? Yeah, that is something that you should really store in your heart. Because let me tell you, it comes up so many times when you have to remember to love your neighbor as yourself. So many times in life. Love my neighbor as yourself. Love my neighbor as yourself. <laughs> That's all I say. So many times. All right, so let's, let's finish this up. I've got two ways. Let's see. I'm going to do this one first. This is how we show love to God. And this says, stand up. What do you think that means? What do you think that means, stand up? Stand up for him? Yeah, that's an, an idea. What do you think? What do you think it means to stand up? So if you're sitting, you're going to just stand up, right? Say again. Stand up to sin. To sing. To sing. To sing. Oh, I thought she was being rude. <laughs> To see, I think she was just deep on me. That's right. Stand up. To, now, this actually means stand up for justice. Whatever's right, you need to stand up because God believes in justice. So, whatever's right, you need to stand up for it. Okay? If you think something is right, stand up and say, hey, I think this is right. You may not be right because we're only human, right? We're only human. Do you think you can put that up on my board? And then the last one is, what's that say? Seek God. seek God. How do we seek God? How can we seek God? Any ideas? You got an idea? How do we seek God? Well, that's praying, really, right? We seek God by praying, right? But here's another one. We seek God by doing Bible study, Sunday school, right? Coming to church. Those are ways that we can seek God, okay? So can you put that one up there for me? Thanks. Now, loving others. Mm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go to this one. To love others. How can we show love to others? This one says... Patience. Amen. <laughs> patience is hard. You're absolutely right. I find that it's really hard. Why do you think patience is hard? <laughs> Out of the mouth of babies. I love that. You are absolutely right. And you know what? It doesn't get any easier as you get older. Oh, can you say it really loud? 
say that over and over again. <laughs> You're right, and, and, and like I said, the older you get, it doesn't matter. It, it's still, it's still. You just, you keep that, keep that Bible verse. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. Just keep saying that. And it kind of helps. I, I'm telling you, it helps. Okay, let's see. Will you put that up for me, please? Here's another one. What's this one say? Help! Yeah, how can we help? What do you think? Help others, yeah. Whenever there is a need, and wherever there is a need, we can step up. What are some ways we can help? What do you think now? Um, by helping them when they get hurt. When they get hurt? Always a good answer, yeah. Whenever somebody gets hurt, you can help. What do you think? If they ask you or if they need it, yeah, you can help. Yeah, help me pick up my toys, please. Help. Yeah, that's, that's what we're teaching Milo. Help, help, help me, please. Help me, please. Will you put that, will you put that there for me, please? This last one. A way to show love to others. Celebrate. Celebrate others. Celebrate others. And let me tell you something. When Cindy comes back, we are going to celebrate her. <laughs> Cindy, we're celebrating you. <laughs> All right. So to celebrate others, we, we celebrate at birthdays, don't we? And parties. I love to celebrate. Don't you love to celebrate? It's kind of one of my favorite things. It's all about having fun, and that's me. I love to have fun. If I'm not having fun, it's no fun. Right? Yeah, so celebrate others. Always find a reason to say, hey, you are the best there is. I love what you're doing today. Always find a way to say that to somebody. It lifts them up. And in all oh, do you need my do you need this? And encourages them, she said. I love that. You're right. It lifts them up and encourages them. So that is all I have. And we had two spots left. And I guess I miscounted. I am not perfect, am I? No. But we love you. <laughs> oh, thanks for celebrating me. All right. Let's, let's say a prayer. Dear Jesus. Dear Jesus. We love you. We love you. And we love others too. And we love others too. Help us to celebrate everyone. Help us to celebrate everyone. Be with us today. Be with us today. We love you again. We love you again. Amen. Amen. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You guys are out of luck today. I got nothing for you. <laughs> I do have extra pieces of paper though. Um, if you guys want to color, I've got crayons. I've got um, I've got crayons you can color, and you can make a picture of how you can celebrate somebody. Does that sound like a good idea? Show me how you can celebrate somebody. Then you can come up to me afterwards, and you can give me that paper, and I'll trade it out for a treat. Or a snack, I guess is what I want to say on the street. Okay? So if you need crayons, come and get crayons out of my bucket here. And if you don't, I'll get the crayons. Did you bring crayons? Anybody need crayons? Crayons? You guys got crayons? Already? Okay, good.
Lord, you are king. You are king of the universe, you are king over us, and you have led the way as to how a king is to truly be a servant king. Move within our hearts, allow your Holy Spirit to flow around us, in us, through us, and out of us, that others may know of your kingship, your deep love, and your ability to enter into all of our lives. Now grant us your presence, and may the words of my mouth and meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you and to you alone, for you are our Redeemer, Christ Jesus the Lord. Amen. Grace, oh, you may be seated. Grace to you and peace from our Lord and our Savior, who was, who is, and who will always be. I'm going to take this as an opportunity to let you know that in two Sundays, on the 8th of December, the choir will be leading us with the cantata. So please get the word out, invite your friends, family members. As you can tell, the reason we sound so good today is we have people harmonizing from our choir. And it's wonderful, so thank you. And just use that as, this is the club. All right. I don't know whether many of you have ever watched The Lord of the Rings or read J.R.R. Tolkien's Lord of the Rings, but in, in the movie, there is a scene where those who were from Mordor, who were horrible, and were almost like zombies coming out, were up against the battle against good. And there's a scene in the movie where all of the soldiers, all of the people are coming together to fight one another, and it's almost overwhelming in the movie. Or you can even think of Braveheart with William Wallace and what happened uh, when the Scottish were fighting the English. And you have this humongous battle, and there was William Wallace right in the middle of the thick of things. And it used to be that the kings would go out and they would be there in battle, maybe back a little ways, but they would lead the way. And now, how many times do kings lead the way into battle? Never. Never. They just send everybody else to do it, right? Yeah. Well, that's a fun thought. <laughs> you could go for somebody else. You could be the one that's on the front line. We've had others in our, in our sanctuary here who have been to war. And they know what it's like to be in the middle and in the midst of things. And someone else sent them to do their work for them. But our king is different than that. I don't know whether you noticed what it said in the scriptures, but our king fights in a different way. We have the story, the account in John's Gospel of our king. Pilate doesn't know how to understand him. He's different than the rest of the world. He approaches things in a different way. He's kind of shaking his head, Pilate is, and scratching his head, wondering, who are you? Your own people have brought you forward and said you're a king, and are you a king? And what's Jesus' response? You said so. Do you think Jesus is afraid? No. Nope. He knows exactly what he's supposed to do, doesn't he? And the next line is, for this I was born. For this I came. My job is different than anyone else had expected my job to be. Many of us know that the thought in Jewish world at that time was that, and probably even today, was that the son of David would arrive, and what did that mean? Well, David was a king. David was the one who went into battle. We think of David and Goliath, right, leading the way out on the front lines. This little kid, this shepherd boy, who gets in the midst of everything, who takes out a slingshot. We were talking about that in confirmation the other night. And how is the slingshot? And they all think like this. And I said, oh, no, it's like this. And he went like this, and he went go, and it hit the guy right in the middle of the head. This little shepherd boy becomes 
the yes. one that's lifted yes. up to be king. And it's his son. It's the son of man who is to come that we read about in Daniel. And he's going to lead the way for this king to lead the way. And in people's minds, they thought he would be on a big white stallion leading the way into battle, but he comes on a donkey as he enters Jerusalem. And he stands before Pilate, and Pilate just scratches his head. You're not the type of king that I would expect. Are you truly the king of the Jews? Well, you say so, for this I come. For this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. That's the kind of king he is. And the next line from Pilate is, what is true? That's not here, but that's his next line. So what is really true? What kind of a king do we have? The one the world can't figure out. This king comes as a servant. This king is the one who's willing to lay down his life. He's the one who's the forerunner in the battle. He's the one who, who fights the battle in the strangest way. He fights the battle all by himself. There was no one else behind him, was there? Where were his soldiers? Anybody know? They were running away. They weren't there. His soldiers turned their tail and they ran. And they were afraid and they hid out because he was different than anything they expected. That is our king. Our king chose to fight the battle for us alone. Does that make sense in our world? In any way, shape, or form, does that make any sense that a king would be in battle on his own up front fighting everything? And how did he do it? He climbed onto a cross. Or he allowed them to just put him. He had a crown, right? What was his crown made of? Thorns. Thorns. Really? How does that fit with the world? Doesn't fit, does it? Did he have a robe? Well, for a short time he did, but just a short time. They paraded him around. Did he have a scepter? What? For a short time. And the way he led us is beyond understanding, isn't it? We follow a king that loves us so desperately that he took the fight on by himself. Not leading an army at the battle, not destroying others, but lifting others up. That's what he did. He didn't go onto the cross to destroy others. He wasn't there to lay them flat, to chop them into pieces. He was on the cross to save their very souls to save our very souls. That's the kind of king that we follow. That's the one who stepped up to the plate. Now the night before he was taken into custody, well, he prayed that that might pass from him. Not to say that there weren't moments when he shook. In fact, he prayed so fervently. What happened? Does anybody know? He sweat blood from his brow. That meant everything inside him was, was struggling. <coughs> but he didn't let it deter him from being our king. Our servant. The one who was there to fight the battle with Satan. 
to deliver us into freedom. And we don't even know most of the time that we're free. What a king we have. There is a missionary who wrote um, about his time in the Vietnam area. And he said in this area there were there were the people who ate white rice and the people who ate long rice. And they separated their community. The Laotians had the white rice and the Vietnamese had the long rice. And so they separated the community based on their culture, not on who was in control or where they grew up geographically. It was all by their culture. Well, Jesus separates us by our culture, too. Whose culture do we live in? Do we live in the world's culture or do we live in Christ's culture? Do we follow kings of power or do we follow a servant king? How is it, as Kathy's been talking to the kids over these weeks, that we have learned to become the servants of Christ, the followers of Christ. We are soldiers, but not the soldiers people think of. We are the soldiers who lead in this way. We read the Bible, we're patient, we stand up for others, we pray, we say thank you, we seek God, we pray for others, we're honest, we're forgiving. We obey, we trust, we respect, we worship, we share, we help, we listen, and we smile as we do each phase of that kind of servanthood, that kind of leadership, as we follow a king who has taught us the best way possible. What's that? But we don't always fit in, do we? The culture of Jesus is far different than the culture of this world. Are we seen as fitting in and going along, or are we seen as those who care for the underdog? We follow the king who is on the cross, who made a decision for us. This is Christ the King Sunday, and the king we follow chose us, went to battle for us, and every day battles for us. And for everyone around you, and I say this often, and for the people who don't even know, <coughs> isn't it wonderful that our culture is different? <clears throat> Jesus is the king who is unlike anyone the world has ever seen. As we were singing today, every single song I've had chills on. Because I walked in this morning wondering, how are we going to sound? I said to Mike, as I was waiting, I said, Mike, better pray for us this morning. <laughs> Sandy isn't here. I haven't heard anything from Mila. Oh, boy. And then when you started to sing, I heard the Spirit of God, not as the world expects, but as our King comes. Singing with joy. Do you think there's a piano in heaven? I think it would be millions and millions of voices in perfect harmony. I don't talk about this often. Years ago, I was at a under, well, it was a Lutheran conference on the Holy Spirit in that one, you know, because we only like to talk just about Jesus. But it was a Lutheran conference on the Holy Spirit, and I was, I just was just graduating from college in, in a, a place in Minneapolis of all places, and uh, listening to many speakers. And all of a sudden, people started singing in the spirit. That means they weren't singing in English. They were singing in an utterly language. It, was, it sounded like I was in heaven. And everyone was in perfect harmony. It was incredible. Why I don't talk about it often, I don't know. The Holy Spirit was so prevalent in this place 
the hearts were just overwhelmed. And I remember thinking, I don't want this because I don't understand it. And, and I felt something. In this part, I told you, I felt something. It felt like somebody put something over me. And I, uh, I turned to my friend and said, did you feel that? And she said, what? And I said, did you feel that? She said, no. <laughs> and uh, after the singing stopped, one of the speakers went up to the pulpit, or the center, and said, uh, as we were singing our praises, I had a vision that the top of the building opened up and angels came down and put robes of ministry on certain people. I guess that's what I felt. But I want to go back to the singing. It was the most beautiful thing I've ever heard in my life because it was perfect harmony and it was God's language. I didn't have it. I listened, though. We have a king that oversees us in so many ways. From different levels to different places, and sometimes we live in fear. But we have no reason to fear. Because our king is always in front of us. No matter what we're going through, our king is in front of us, protecting and leading the way. There is no other king on earth that is like our king. And for that, we say hallelujah. 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 Gracious God, we thank you for being a king that is unlike any other king. The king who loves us so deeply in our souls, even knowing our problems, even knowing our frailties, even knowing our sins and chooses to be in front of us in our best. Abigail, stop. Open our no, eyes please, to please stop. To follow him and to live as he lived his life, serving others. Amen. I would ask that you please stand as we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated for the prayers of the church this morning. <laughs> I am. Um, we will add Cindy into our prayers. And uh, are there any other prayer requests I need to be aware of this morning? abundant love for the world. Let us pray for our neighbors, the church, and all of creation. Revive our congregation, synods, and national church body to reflect the love, justice, and kinship of your kingdom. Raise up diverse leaders who teach and serve your people. Merciful God, our prayer. Nourish parched lands and bring relief to flooded places. Protect wildlife, habitats, and endangered prey species that the chorus of creation's praise resounds with joy. Merciful God, 
Receive our prayer. Grant wisdom to the leaders who govern, legislate, and deliberate on our behalf. Advance your nonviolent reign of justice seeking love through their work. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. Draw near to those who are detained on trial or incarcerated. Transform systems of retribution into systems of reconciliation and restoration. Empower activists who advocate for change. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. Remind us of your enduring love in all seasons. Guide the planning efforts of worship leaders and volunteers who usher our congregation into meaningful advent. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. Gracious Lord, we lift before you those who are struggling, those who are in the midst of prayer, or those who are in the midst of war. Be with those areas that are recovering from the hurricane, flooding and melted, and be with those who struggle with the various difficulties in their lives and illnesses. For John and Casey, Dolores Rasmussen and her son David, for Marvin and Bonnie, Robert, Patty, Mike, for Susan, Ashlyn, Alicia, for Lisa and Gary, for Scott, Tammy, Linda, Andrew, for Joe and Rodney, and for Rita, for Penny and for Linda, for Ray and Danny, Carol and Linda, for Dale, for Kaylee, for Susan, who continues to be in rehab. We lift up Kathy, Glennis, and Pat, Bill, for Gerald and Red, for Virginia, for Susan, for Braden, McKay, and Sylvia. We lift up Jane, for Judy, and Lynn, for Will, Jim, and for Josh, who are in battle. And we give you thanks, Lord, for Judy Carson, Eleanor Sims, and Ralph Westhead. Continue to use them for the upbuilding of your church. We offer our prayers to you, gracious God, trusting in your boundless love for all that you have made through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. We receive the offering at this time.
that you have filled us with good things. How thankful we are for all that we have been given, for our homes, our family, for jobs. We thank you for being present in this community, and we ask that your blessings would be on the gifts that have been given out of love in return to you. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks. He gave it for them all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people. For the forgiveness of sins, do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come, for all is ready. Our King, Jesus, has set the table for you. This table does not belong to Bethel or to the Lutheran Church, to Pastor Barb. This table belongs to the King of Glory, the King who comes for you. And all are welcome. You may be seated at the usher's kitchen floor.
that you have fought the battle for all of us, and you win. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing our closing hymn. And that's literal and very soon. Well, we can get excited about this. Let's get excited. Celebrate. 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 Celebrate.